Hi, this is Greg Ellis. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm a professional drummer, uh, percussionist, composer, producer. I've worked on hundreds of albums and movie scores, TV shows, video games over a 30-year career. I've also worked with dozens of artists from over 30 different countries and I'm deeply involved in the world of sound and rhythm therapy as well. I've seen firsthand throughout my career uh, the effect that sound has on us. Um, certainly in the form of music, it's, it's something that can be designed to make us feel good or to affect us in other ways. But sound affects us in all forms, not just music. Um, certainly the tone of our voices, the level at which we speak. But the sound I'm going to talk about today is the sound of noise and noise pollution that is permeating uh, every aspect of our natural ecosystems as well as our own individual sense of uh, health and well-being. We may not make a connection immediately of sound of noise pollution being immediately connected to climate change. Um, as we think of climate change, we think of the gases and toxic emissions that are uh, being produced by machinery and uh, technology, construction, traffic noise, trains, subways, buses, uh, airplanes, in the ocean, shipping and oil drilling. But these things that release the worst things for our environment and our atmosphere are also generating the noise pollution that's affecting our, our world uh, in very much a similar way. The things that are the worst producers of these gases are actually creating the most noise. Uh, I'm going to share some examples of how noise pollution is affecting not just us but our natural world as well and hopefully offer some uh, ways to take care of ourselves and the environment through this awareness. Um, in nature it really affects all animals. Um, certainly by drowning out the, the calls and songs and ways all animals communicate through sound uh, is affecting ecosystems drastically. It's uh, driving some animals to leave their natural habitats, which leaves gaping holes in the ecosystem where some of these animals are uh, the ones that disperse the seeds and pollinate the flowers. As certain predators are drowned out and they leave their environment, then plant grazers are more plentiful and uh, you'll see full ecosystems be completely wiped out just by the noise that's being generated around them. In the ocean, it's uh, probably one of the worst uh, places affected by noise pollution. Sound travels fastest through water. And the animals living in the ocean, the whales, dolphins, all animals, but those that communicate through sonar and echo uh, echolocation are seeing that their calls are not traveling as far. They could travel hundreds of miles through the water, but now with the low hum of shipping and oil drilling and uh, other echolocation devices, mechanical devices, these frequencies are canceled out by the mechanical noise, so the sound doesn't travel as far. This drastically affects, his, affects the um, migration and mating, uh, and then in turn the population of these animals. How that reaches then directly to humans is that in the Arctic, for instance, the indigenous people that, uh, that live through the sustainability of the ocean and the health and well-being of the animals in the ocean are then seeing diminished populations, which means that their population is diminished, which if they cannot live by just the sea alone, then they have to leave their habitat. It keeps connecting and connecting. Um, it's not just natural habitats, and I'm going to get into um, how it's affecting us personally and how mechanical noise in the cities is also quite dangerous on a physical level, not just on a psychological level. Uh, in addition to causing hearing loss, obviously, excessive noise exposure can raise blood pressure and pulse rates. It can cause irritability, anxiety, mental fatigue. It interferes with our sleep, with our recreation and even our personal communication. So although the physical effects of noise pollution uh, can be tangibly measured and diagnosed, it's more the psychological effects that I believe are becoming much more harmful. 
the machine noise of our daily lives interrupts and disconnects us not just from our own innate sense of connection to our natural environment, but it affects our own internal processing of thoughts and emotions as well. And for some city dwellers, it may be impossible to escape the noise of their surroundings, but it's important for one's mental health to try and find a space or time during the day to be in as quiet a place as possible. Blocking out the noise with headphones and earplugs is suggested, but this is something that is uh, also limited to some people. And noise cancellation headphones and some of these devices can also be quite expensive. And these devices are also needing to be manufactured, which gets us back to uh, the manufacturing that's causing the noise pollution. The circle connects very quickly. So I'm here to suggest other ways to combat the noise pollution and how it affects us on an individual level. Um, in terms of the environment and a broader picture, we know that electric cars, for instance, don't generate the same noise nearly as loud as gas-driven cars. Machinery is the same way. Alternative inner source, energy sources are actually very quiet by nature, solar and wind, um, water power. These are things that are can generate the same amount of energy without generating the noise. The one positive effect of noise pollution um, is that it doesn't leave a residue. So once the noise is shut off, the effects will be seen immediately. So back to how that affects us personally is in very much the same way. We're all very conscious of the food we eat, but we don't necessarily uh, pay the same attention to the sounds that we ingest. And all sound is ingested. All sound is absorbed by our bodies, just like the sound and the noise absorbed by the water in the ocean. The quality of sound is also something that we need to become very aware of. So... Music, for instance, that's generated with only electronic sound affects the body and our interconnectivity of our processing of emotions in a very different way. So just as organic food can uh, be better for us, organic sound as well can be better for us. So there's many, many studies of um, how listening to a natural habitat recording, for instance, um, rainfall in a forest, the sound of waves or a river stream. What these do is immediately cancel out the frequencies generated by the machinery in our lives, the hum of our appliances, of our computers, the sirens and helicopters and uh, even dog barking and gardening equipment. All these things are generating a frequency that can be found in nature. If you find the right frequency in a natural sound, it can actually cancel out the mechanical noise in the way that the mechanical noise is canceling out the organic sounds in the oceans and in the uh, other natural habitats. So if we think on a global level and we think in terms of alternative energy sources for our machinery and our uh, manufacturing, we can think of sound as an energy source for our own emotional health. And what I uh, have found in the work I've done is when I create music that uh, is made with these instruments, for instance, a Tibetan bull. This sound immediately affects the body differently. It's something that even the same frequency on a machine would have a very different effect on us. The reason these sounds generate that kind of feeling inside of us is, first of all, they're organic, but they're designed for this. And there's many, uh, many instruments that have that. To have your own bowl, for instance. To find music that's created with these instruments. This is something that immediately we can affect ourselves and affect the... Um, dissuade the effects of noise pollution around us. It reduces the stress, anxiety, and helps us sleep. So as we think of solutions throughout the world of um, how to deal with the obvious um, 
uh, trouble with climate change, we also need to take care of ourselves. We need to find a quiet space. We need to allow ourselves time to think and to ponder on ways that we can all adjust our noise pollution uh, emissions in that sense. Um, I, th I think that without that kind of space and that time for our mind to regenerate itself and to allow our thoughts to expand and grow, who's to say that this noise is not distracting a child somewhere who doesn't know how to have that space and that child is the one that could come up with a solution that we're talking about. Um, to inspire artists in a new way to create work that uh, actually is meant to affect us and our positive state of health and well-being instead of thinking of it just as another commodity to put out. Uh, not to sound too Californian, but I think that consciousness raising is something that could benefit us greatly. Um, so in closing, I think uh, to be aware of the connection that sound has, try living in a way that um, you treat sound as you would treat food, as you would treat a smell in the air. You try to purify it. You try to make it something more pleasant for yourself. And I think the more you explore the way sound can affect us, uh, you'll see very quickly in your life that you can reduce the effects of noise pollution immediately. And just like I said earlier, that the noise pollution does not leave a residue, which is the most positive thing about it. If we unplug the source, uh, you'll find that the decibels that we are drowning in uh, are not there any longer. So I thank you for sharing this time. I appreciate you listening. I hope it inspires some ideas of how we can um, approach all issues of climate change and not just think of the way it's affecting the atmosphere, but the way it's affecting us as well. And to hopefully uh, find ways to take care of each other. Um, I think in a way that we really desperately need right now. So thank you very much. It's a pleasure to talk and I uh, hope you all take care.